Hey guys, Infusion here, and today I'm going to show you my very first tutorial in a series of tutorials that outlines the pulversatur and synthesis in general, and how you can use synthesis in your projects. Now, I've written this series of videos with the total beginner in mind, so even if you haven't done anything before with music, you should be able to follow along with my videos. Uh, if you'd like, you can go to audio tool and open the program if you don't have any software but all the principles i'm going to be talking about are applicable to any synth that you will encounter in most common programs as well i'm going to be talking about a little bit of theory uh, before each lesson just to give you a little bit of heads up on what's going on so anyways without any further ado i hope you enjoy the very first synthesis lesson this is infusion and I hope you have a good day. So, how exactly does electronic synthesis work? Well, put simply, sound is created by applying a voltage that continually repeats a specific pattern at a really fast rate. In synthesizer terms, this specific pattern of sound is called an oscillator, and individually it forms the basis of creating an instrument. Together, you can put many oscillators together to create a rich, interesting sound. This is the fundamental principle behind what's called subtractive synthesis. To relate to the oscillator in conventional music terms, you can think of it as the timbre of an electronic sound. That is, by changing the oscillators, you change the fundamental properties of a sound. This is why the first step of designing a sound usually starts with choosing and tuning your oscillators. While there are many oscillators available on today's popular synthesizers, a great deal of classic sounds can be created by just using three fundamental tones. They are sine, saw, and square. At the time of writing, these three tones are very prominent in modern pop music, as many songs rely on pure basic tones for their basses, leads, and hook instruments. Once you come to understand and recognize them, these basic oscillators will prove invaluable to creating a wide variety of synth sounds. So that covers the timbre of a sound, but how do oscillators change pitch? As you will see in a later lesson, understanding the concept behind this will come in handy. Musical notes are created by repeating oscillators at different rates. This rate of cycles per second is called hertz, and by modifying the hertz you change the pitch of the sound. Faster cycles of sound produce higher notes, while lower cycles of sound produce lower notes. It is in this manner that an individual tone can be modified to play from a keyboard. In fact, if you look at any synthesizer, you can think of every piano key as a gated trigger that runs an oscillator at a different frequency. This is identical to the way a piano has a physical hammer for every single key. It is in this and many other ways that electronic synthesizers operate the same way as traditional instruments. So now that you know a few things about synthesis, we can take a look at an actual synthesizer and apply our knowledge. In this series of videos, we will be using Audio Tools Pulversateur. If you'd like to follow along, please go to the audio tool site below and click launch app. You will notice on the left hand side that there are three columns, each titled with OSC. This is your oscillator section. Under each column is a variety of knobs and dials. These represent the various settings you can apply to each oscillator. I will go over the meaning of them shortly. For now, we are going to want to initialize the default settings. To do this, left click on the pulver satur and click the small triangle. A context menu will come up. Select Init Patch. This will reset all of the settings on the synthesizer. You should be left with the Pulver Satur looking like this. Next, we want to put a music note in our piano roll so the synth can make a sound. In Audio Tool, this is achieved by opening the timeline and creating a box in the Note Lane. Audio Tool will automatically create a note lane whenever you add a device. However, if for some reason it's not there, click on Add Track, select the Pulver Satur from the list, and select Note Track. 
After you make the box, double click it to open the piano roll. From here, you can click on the piano roll keys to preview your sound. Once you find a note you like, click in the grid to place a note and hit play on the timeline. Lastly, we'll drag the loop marker so that the pattern repeats. Now we can preview our sound continually while we play with each oscillator setting. The very first setting is called Pan, which stands for Pan Pot. This can also be called Balance on other devices. In a standard stereo setup, this changes the amount of sound allocated to each speaker. It goes from all the way left, to all the way right. Next up is level, which is also sometimes referred to as volume, amount, or gain. It determines how loud your oscillator is. This is used in conjunction with other oscillators to mix them together. After that is tune and octave. These are two of the more important controls. You'll remember that the pitch of a sound is controlled by the rate at which an oscillator repeats. The tuning is basically just modifying the hertz of the waveform. Tune lets you finally control the pitch of your tone. Fine tuning is measured in cents. A hundred cents is basically one note, or one interval up on the keyboard. As you can see, tuning can be used to change the frequencies between traditional western scale. You can also use it with another oscillator to create single key chords. While Tune allows you to deal with individual keys, Octave looks at the bigger picture. It lets you change the fundamental range of the oscillator's pitch across entire octaves. If you don't know what an octave is, it's basically an identical note, higher or lower on the keyboard. You would think that by simply playing the note lower or higher, you'd achieve the same thing. But add in a second oscillator, and suddenly you have two octaves playing from one key. <laughs> Lastly, we have the waveform section. You can see it has visual representations of the basic waveforms. On other synthesizers, you might select the oscillators by name, or by digital menu. On the pulverisateur, you can select between sine, saw, and square by clicking on the waveform.
You can also morph between two of the oscillators by moving the knob. Try experimenting with different settings on the single oscillators to get a feel for what each parameter sounds like. Also keep in mind that these settings will be on most other synthesizers. All that's left to do is come up with a pattern for yourself. Creating riffs will be covered in a later lesson, so for now, just fool around with trial and error until you come up with a pattern you like. Hey guys, Infusion here again, and I'd just like to thank everybody who's been following me on Audio Tool and on YouTube, all you kind folks. I would just like to take this moment to ask you guys, if you haven't yet, to subscribe to my channel, because, um, you know, that would be really awesome, and uh, I really don't make these videos to sell out, they're just to help people who are looking for assistance in making music, so... Um, any, any love you could give me on that front would be well appreciated. Anyhow, I hope you found this useful, and uh, stay tuned because I'm going to be having my next lesson up soon. This is Electro signing out.